Entering the 2016 NFL season, Calvin Johnson Jr. had earned six straight Pro Bowl selections and was just two years removed from three consecutive first-team All-Pro selections. Johnson, who stood at 6'5 and a lean 240 pounds, had been a force to be reckoned with since he broke into the league back in 2007, and he had undoubtedly earned his nickname, Megatron. He really was the perfect combination of size and athleticism. In fact, at the NFL Combine, he ran his 40-yard dash in just 4.35 seconds and recorded a 43-inch vertical leap, which at 6'5 and 240 pounds is simply ridiculous. His athleticism and frame were surely gifts, but what made Johnson Megatron was the seemingly robotic way he dominated on the field. He glided through the coverage, finding pockets of space between packages that were being designed specifically to stop him. And even when he was covered, well, he was still open and would use his massive frame and vertical leap to rise above two, sometimes three defenders at once to make the play. More so, there was never an ounce of diva in him. He was a consummate professional who kept to himself, stayed out of trouble, and just wanted to win football games. Just in case there's anyone out there who is still questioning how special Calvin Johnson was, how about the fact that during his nine-year career, he only missed nine games as a receiver? Nine games. Maybe he was actually a transformer, and that wouldn't make much more sense. In early January, following the end of a frustrating 7-9 and nine campaign for Detroit, Johnson told reporters, Like many players at this stage of their career, I am currently evaluating options for my future. I would expect to have a decision regarding this matter in the not-too-distant future. But given his age, the fact that his health was still in relatively good standing, and, well, the fact that he was still just so effective week in and week out, very few considered the fact that he might actually call it quits. Two months came and went, and much to the chagrin of the Motown faithful, Johnson met every ounce of his statement and officially retired from the NFL in the most Calvin Johnson way imaginable, an understated announcement from the organization. Fans, media, and contemporaries were all stunned by the decision. Just two days later, Johnson delivered an equally modest written statement that checked all of the I'm retiring boxes. He thanked the owners of the team, the fans, his teammates, and well, everyone really. He even doubled down on how happy he was to have been a lion, saying, I loved playing in Detroit and will forever be a lion. My biggest regret is that I wasn't able to help give our fans a championship. But I do believe the future of the Lions is bright, and with the leadership from people like Rod Wood and Bob Quinn, who I've gotten to know over the past few months, I'm confident that our fans will soon be rewarded with the championship you deserve. But something wasn't adding up. Why would this freak of nature who had no attitude issues, only missed nine games in nine years, and had tens of millions of more dollars to earn, walk away from the game of football in March of 2016, at just 30 years old? However, as his retirement wore on, some dominoes started to fall and clues started to surface. First, in May, Johnson had uncharacteristically critical and transparent comments about how his tenure with the Lions had concluded. He told Dave Burkett, the Lions writer for the Detroit Free Press, I just didn't feel like I was treated the way I should have been treated on the way out. That's all. I mean, it's all good. I'm not tripping. I don't feel any kind of way. Just, hey, that's what they did. Hey, it is what it is. Johnson didn't get too into detail about what exactly the Lions had done. He just made a very vague but leading statement that went like so. It's simple, it's easy when you think about it. After a little digging, NFL media members quickly came to, as Calvin would put it, a simple conclusion. It's all about the money. While many NFL teams will waive a retiring player's obligation to pay back a prorated portion of their signing bonus if they retire early, the Lions told their franchise player of nine years who they had failed to build around over and over again, that it was time to break open the piggy bank and pay up. Asking Johnson, who did earn over $100 million in his career according to Over the Cap, for $1.88 million may not seem like much of an ask, but there is just no chance that this was about the money. It was about respect. During his nine years with the Lions, Johnson played through countless injuries on some pretty lackluster teams. I mean, the guy was a generation talent and he somehow only played in two career playoff games. To put it simply, ownership failed Megatron, and then they failed the fans, and then they had the audacity to ask the most exciting player the franchise has had since Barry Sanders to pay back some of his hard-earned dough. I mean, come on. NFL franchises make $625,000 in revenue sharing a day. It is no wonder that Johnson was offended by the demand. The embarrassment for Detroit's ownership group didn't stop there, though. During a press tour that Johnson was doing to promote the Italian Bowl, the championship game of American football in Italy, for those who don't know. 
he made some comments that indicated perhaps there was more to his decision than he had let on in his retirement statement. Johnson told a room full of media members, I didn't see a chance for them to win a Super Bowl at the time. For the work I was putting in, it wasn't worth my time to keep on beating my head up against the wall and not go anywhere. It's a definition of insanity. Hmm, that doesn't sound like someone who loved playing in Detroit. It didn't stop there, though. After making comments about how all he wanted to do was win a Super Bowl, a reporter pried deeper, asking if Johnson ever had thought about changing teams. And his response was shockingly contradicting of his March comments. I mean, I thought about it, Johnson said. Just like in basketball, you know, guys, they create these super teams. But it's not quite like that in football where I have the freedom just to go. I was stuck in my contract with Detroit, and they told me they would not release my contract so I would have to come back to them. What a drastic departure that is from when he reassured fans that he loved playing in Detroit and was confident they would soon be rewarded with the championship. So Calvin, did you want to be a Lion forever? Did you? Did you? I think not. To be fair, if you take a look at what the Lions did during Johnson's nine years in Detroit, well, you probably wouldn't want to be stuck there either. The franchise was just 51 and 93 during his nine-year career, including a shameful 2008 season that saw them go 0 and 16. A season that poetically closed out with Johnson posting an 102-yard, two-touchdown performance in Week 17 against the Packers. Anyone who understands what Johnson was all about as a football player and as a man and has an ounce of competitive spirit can relate to Johnson's frustrations. This isn't exactly a surprise, though. The Lions have been in an up franchise dating back long before Calvin Johnson had the misfortune of being selected by them as a second overall pick back in 2007. The Lions have only made one NFC Championship game in their 50-plus years, and that was over 25 years ago. Not only have they been a notoriously dysfunctional franchise, but they also have a rich tradition of wasting the careers of their supremely talented players. <clears throat> Barry Sanders. The similarities are actually frightening. Despite having vastly different skill sets and playing different positions, both guys were undeniably special talents on the field. Sanders was a feature back who possessed elite elusiveness and acceleration, while Johnson was a go-to wide receiver who had the ability to run past defensive backs and effortlessly jump right over them. Not only did they share freakish physical traits, but they were both humble, hardworking, and unassuming superstars who did as much as they could to drag along a bottom-feeding franchise. Let's take a look at the striking comparisons. Johnson was the number two overall pick. Sanders was number three. Johnson played nine NFL seasons. Sanders played ten. Sanders won just one playoff game while Johnson won zero. The similarities go on. They both hold nearly every Lions record for their respective positions. They both quietly retired before their 31st birthdays. And they both retired because of, well, they were sick and tired of playing for a franchise that couldn't build anything around them. Finally, both players ended their storied careers in financial disputes with the organization that is now valued by Forbes at $1.7 billion. The Lions actually sued Sanders taking him to court to try and recoup his $5.5 million signing bonus. Sanders even told them he'd happily pay them back for his release and his agent pushed for a trade. But the Lions were relentless in their pursuit of wasting talent. Sound familiar? Listen, I don't pretend to know all that goes into running an NFL franchise. I'm sure there are aspects of that process that go way above my head and I'm all right with that. But here is one painfully simple tidbit for the Lions brass, who has unsurprisingly had trouble signing marquee free agents. When you treat your star players like shit and squabble over chump change with them, no one is going to want to sign with you. Now we hope some of the Lions front office watches our video. Otherwise, when they trip and fall into another generational talent, because once again, they're at the top of the draft, this vicious cycle will just repeat itself all over again. Sure, Gavin Johnson had some nagging injuries towards the end of his career, knees, ankles, whatever. But don't get it twisted. He walked away from the game because the game, and even more so the Lions, weren't giving anything back to him. He was putting his body on the line almost every week, season after season, just to watch the front office make the same boneheaded signings and to watch the team flounder helplessly as a result of the ownership incompetence. Why would he waste another year of his life? Like Calvin told the Italian press, it's a definition of insanity. So much so that he was willing to walk away from the game he loved since he was a kid and quite literally millions of dollars just so he didn't have to play another game in a Lions uniform. The Lions have made some strides to try and repair these two relationships and repair their reputation among the league's talent pool. They hired Barry Sanders to a ceremonial position back in 2017 and now publicly stated that they want nothing more than to make amends with Calvin Johnson, to which Johnson said firmly, they already know what they gotta do. The only way they're going to get me back 
is they put that money back in my pocket. Nah, you don't do that. I don't care what they say. They can put it back, and then they can have me back. That's the bottom line. And for that, I applaud you, Megatron. 